Hey traders, we're going to go through a bit of a QA and got a whole bunch of questions, answers, and all that sort of down home country goodness on the videos that I've been doing lately. So I'm just going to, uh, today's video is all going to be basically me answering those questions. So let's get straight into it. Do not place a trade based on what you're seeing in this video. Trading is risky and it can cause substantial financial loss. There is no guarantees of making money in the markets. And trading is the most hardest thing you will ever do and it takes a long time to become a good trader. So this video is just educational only. If you're struggling with your trading right now, then click on the very first link in the description and get a free training, the seven universal laws to become a master trader that will boost your success, consistency, and confidence without spending a decade trying to figure it out. Click on the very first link in the description right now. All right, so I'm going to go back to my home playlist. If you guys haven't seen uh, one thing that I recommend you guys doing, you've obviously got all the different market updates here. Oh, this is obviously on my home page. Then you've got trading techniques and so on and so forth. So I'll be also be putting up mine, uh, there'll be mindset playlist there as well too. Anyway, so one thing I want to do is I want to, I want to, I want to do, 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 I want to start going through some Q and A basically for the last week. So let me go, let me start with this video here and let me just minimize that there. And let me just bring this down through to here. And let me see here, 6 is number of the beast. Yes, that's right. This is the market, the market dropped. Yep. Um, let's see what happens there. Thanks, Destiny. No problems. Dow down. That's right. Destiny. Yep. Thank you very much. Um, same thing happened to Argentina. Could be happening here where the currency goes to completely crap and stock silver gold miners are the safe haven. Um, Poker, I wouldn't... Mm, I don't think the US dollar, the world currency is going to go to zero. I just, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Um, but yeah, but then therefore 660 points as cryptocurrencies crash. See the dollar vigilante. Interesting video. Yeah, no. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just, I, I think, I think it's important just to be focused on the charter support too. Um, so yeah. So let me just, that's, that's the very first video there. Let me go now to this video here. And this one here was Dow Jones massive pullback. Let me see if there's any questions on this one right here. Gold silver miners survived well out this. So this tells me their strength there. Interesting how the crypto sold off of the markets. You think the opposite. Great video as usual. All right. Thanks very much, Richard. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. So the silver, the silver and gold stocks have been, been holding up quite nicely. They have been uh, compared to the overall market. So I told you. I told you nine biblical years completed on Jan 21st January of this bull market and you were laughing and seven days later market crashed. I know chart is king, but now I have realized that God's numbers control. <laughs> oh, come on, Ashu. Seriously, man, you've been putting your numbers on all the entire year on my, on my YouTube videos and you say you got the date right. No, you didn't. You said the 21st. A week later, it crashed. No one couldn't have picked that. Not God's numbers or anything like that. If that was right, Bo Polly would be a billionaire right now. <laughs> Come on, man. Seriously, focus on the chart. Don't try and pick the top or pick the date. Guess what? You'll be you'll be broke. You yeah, you may have gotten this one right, but now you're gonna go broke trying to pick the top again. So anyway. Uh taking a very long for taking taking a very uh long term look at this and it does not look good and hasn't for a while. We should have had a correction in 2016 instead it rallied. Yes, no, uh, instead of you saying it should have blah, 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 all this sort of stuff, David, just focus on what the charts are saying. And the charts are making high highs, high lows, buyers in control. We are so far from the 200 SMA on the one month chart that it needs to be pulled back to 50 to 50. To, on the one month chart, that needs to pull back 55 to 60%. You know, it may happen. Even the 50 SMA on the one month needs a needs a 30% decline. Again, it may happen, David. It may happen, but don't be looking on the monthly charts for that. Um, it's just not. Yeah, you just you want to be mainly focusing on the on the daily charts and the weekly charts and really reading that day by day by day. So yeah, but just don't don't be don't look at the market as what you think it should do. Just look at the market what it is doing and then and then respond to what's going on through there. Uh, that's what I was like. I initially thought cryptos could be a could be different to other markets, but no. Basic technical analysis can be used on any market. You taught me a good lesson in the last few months. Fantastic. I appreciate that there. Uh, John, one question. Look at the GDX chart. 
is this the last for a possible washout uh, flashing without the last bulls or not? Uh, Mini, uh, yeah, with that. Uh, if you go look at the if you go look at the uh, the GDX chart, I think uh, right now I believe we I believe we're now starting to head back up at least for the at least for this week anyway. That I see a very I see a, a turnaround happening. If you watch my yesterday's video, you'll be able to see that as well too. Hi Jung, is it possible for the Fed to come in and save the market, and then boom, cra gold crashes as confidence, etc., etc., etc. Uh, Zulu, the the answer to that is maybe, could be, we'll see. Follow the charts, <laughs> right? Just just follow, follow, follow the charts. That's all I say. You know, like the charts. If the market's going to continue going down, guess what? It's going to make lower highs and lower lows. It is that simple, my friend. My friends, <laughs> right? Like it's, it's, it's the market doesn't right. The it, one thing, one thing that's so important to understand is that a market crash, a fifty percent crash doesn't go like that. It never happens. What happens? It has a rundown, rally up, a rundown, and then a rally up, and a rundown, and maybe the sideways movement, and then a drop down. You know what I mean? Like that's lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. Just focus on the charts there. Just focus on the charts. What the charts are saying, um, you know it. it that what you're doing there is focusing on something that is out of your control. What can you control? You control how you respond to how the market is is responding, and and if the mark and, and and the way you want to trade the market is you simply just want to focus on the charts. And as soon as the charts start to tell you things are not looking good, then just look at that there. John, you did warn a possible stock market crash weeks and weeks ago. Good call. Uh, thanks, Robert. Um, I didn't I I didn't know I didn't know when we're going to get this pullback, but I have been saying for the last th uh, two three months that uh, the long term charts are getting very overextended. We are we are due for a pullback, but I just didn't know when. I didn't know how high the the bubble was going to last there. So yeah, definitely, definitely a good one there. Let me go and have a look now at. Uh, let me just minim minimize you, Mr. Russell Brunson. Pretty cool guy. You're a legend, Johnny Howe. <laughs> Thank you, Robbie. <laughs> you and Greg, Greg Marino, fantastic. Markets. Thanks, John. Your explanation concepts of strength and moves really well. Fantastic. Uh, all right, fantastic. There's not much going on that one there. Let's continue on now through to the other ones. Let's go have a look at this video here. And pretty much the same thing I'm looking for. Uh, Long-term silver and gold. Let's just see if there's any questions on this video here. Um, no, no questions there. Let's go have a look at this one here. Just having cash there. Hat. Let's go. Right, this one here. We have John. Just short the shit out of everything. US is going down the tubes. I would. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. I would not be short and everything. Um, in fact, I've I've been long this week. Um, started this week anyway. I've talked about some of the long positions I was going to get into yesterday. If you guys watched the video, I didn't tell you directly I was getting into some of these trades, but I told you sort of what I was getting into, and so far so good. So yeah, I want to short Tesla the other day. One of the short Tesla, but my account is all in. Ah, uh, uh, wrong, wrong, cool hand, wrong, cool, cool hand, Luke. Um, she she took it up the butt. <laughs> um, the cool, Luke. You, it's that is that is the wrong thing to do. Having all your account all in the market at once, that is a very 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 risky. That's 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 how you blow up your account. One thing I recommend you doing is, and the way that I trade, the way that I trade is eighty percent of my funds, roughly eighty percent, or a or a minimum, um, or a minimum, or should I say, yeah, a, a, a maximum, say seventy percent will actually stay in my account and 30% will be split up into different trades. So majority of the time it's around 80% and then I'll put on five or so percent per trade. I might have three or four trades going on at once. And uh, and then from that, so if that whole trade goes belly up, I've still got 80% of your money. If y'all, if everything goes belly up on your account right now, which is a possibility, right? No one knows what's gonna happen. No one, knows, it is a possibility, then your whole account can, 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 can get completely wiped out there. So. Make sure you just understand that. Um, I hope that I hope that makes sense. Silver and gold boom. Uh, let's go have a look here. So silver, silver and stocks go boom. Let's actually see if we see if we have any. I loaded up on the miner sector. Just bought a lot of JNUG. 
I have big balls. Let's get rich, baby. Uh, poker. Um, the only way, if you want to load up on a market, make sure it's making higher highs and higher lows. Do not do not be trying to pick bottoms in the markets. Short term trading, yeah, you can pick like 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 right now. We're probably getting a reversal for the for the week, but as as a big long term trend, no, the markets are still making lower lows and lower highs. Uh, let me just have a look at this one. Actually, let me just have a look at JNUG. Uh, what's that? J-N-U-G. Yeah, so JNUG, like you, you, you said this two days ago. Um, and if you have a look at... Basically, if you have a look at this one here, this is obviously the JNUG, the JNUG chart there. And you're seeing that this is completely still making what? This is the this is now the weekly chart here. Still making lower lows and lower highs. You do not you do not want to be loading up right now on on any stock that looks like this. Why? Let me just, let me just delete the chart here. Why? Because the fact of the matter is is if you look at this chart, and you look at what's happening through here, what are we still doing here? We're still making what? lower highs and lower lows and we now just broke another significant low ho sells are majorly in control here so that's that is just it's it's something so simple but it's so important to understand if you want to try to hold if you want to try to buy something and hold on do not be trying to pick the bottoms of the markets this is long term if you're a short-term trader like i'm in a short i'm in a few short-term trades right now that's a different story right you're in and out short term but if you're trying to buy something for long-term growth, do not be getting in here right now. Wait, wait. Do not be trying to pick the bottom. Professional traders do not try to pick bottoms. Wait for the market to run it back up and start and start to create a little higher stair step. This is so much. This is like, you know, 80% probability here. This one here is like, I don't know. It's it's this thing, this thing could just go sideways for a little bit and then just continue back down. We are still rallying back down. So do not be trying to pick the bottoms there, Mr. Poker. It, it is such. It is such a, it is such, um, it's it's a very gambling mentality, especially if you, you know, just bought lots of JNUG today. It's Again, it's a very, very, very um, gambling approach, especially when the market still, the overall market is telling you we're going down. Do not, do not fight the trend. When the trend changes, we start to make a higher high and then a higher low. That's when you can start to say, okay, we're now going with the trend. The market is telling you, remember the weekly chart is the big guy's footprint. And if the big guy's footprint is telling you what's happening, do not be do not be think you're smarter than the market, because the market will slap the shit out of you guys and and, and run you away. And the reason why I'm, I'm getting sort of I guess frustrated here is because I see it so many times. Again, this is the weekly chart here. The weekly chart is the footprint of the big guys and what they're thinking and what they're doing. And and right now, what they're thinking, and what they're doing is lower highs, lower lows, and we still could be getting ready for another rally back down to through, through to here through to here somewhere. So trying to pick the bottoms of the markets is the most lowest probability strategy where you're going to get your head handed to you. Do not be fighting the trend. Listen to the market. Respect the market. When the market is moving and the market is doing its thing, you need to say, okay, what is the market doing? If it is, is What are the big guys thinking? And how do you know what the big guys thinking? Look at the weekly chart. And if there's a clear lower high, lower low, the big guys are saying, okay, we're short in the market right now. If that changes and the story changes, now the big guys are changing their mind and changing and the whole tune is changing about that stock or what are you looking at and now you can see a movement. This idiot this idiot should focus on the issues, not the not his supposed humor. I'm out of here. <laughs> cool. Well, um Tristan Macklin had turned volume all the way down. This clown is uh, this clown is hard to listen to and acts like a little schoolgirl <laughs> because I don't have any smack that gives me the ability to listen to morons. All right, no problem there. Well, guess what? <laughs> block your ass and block your ass. Bye. Don't don't need your shit. Um, <laughs> miners could blast off like a rocket ship if gold breaks out of the channel. That's exactly right, Fal um, Falcon Ophiri. Yes, that's right. I'm still not sure when that, uh, that I'm not sure, still not sure that will happen this year. It might do. Just follow the charts. Follow the charts. The gold's looking really, really strong right now. Maybe if the overall stock market slides further, it uh, it will inject enough fear into the market. Hard to say. Exactly right. Yes, exactly right. John, I stopped watching your clips about one year ago as I uh, deducted that that you were losing on a lot of trades. 
Um, first thing I want to say about this here is uh, Iona is this, right? I was losing on a lot of trades. The first thing that the first thing that I want to tell you is there is I give you a bit of a market update. You know, literally 90% of the trades that I do with, with what I do in the background, I have an 85% success rate right now. Um, what I do is or I, the most majority of the trades I take, no one ever no one ever even knows about. Every now and then I might put a trade up here. So you may see a few trades that I that I talk about in the public that may that may be maybe may um um that you you know that that I that, that I was having that I was having a few losing trades there yeah that may have happened there but remember ninety percent of my trades I don't I don't show people what I do and um and that's basically what uh uh that's that that's basically uh what what I was talking about there so no one can predict the future Iana and as I was saying before Iana or Iana um. No one can predict the future and no one knows exactly what's going to happen. That's why it's called a trading system. And if you understand how to trade the market, trading the market's not as trading the market is not knowing about not having to know what's going to happen next. So many people get that wrong thinking I have to know what's going to happen next in order for me to make money. No, you don't. No, you don't. That is the biggest mistake. Go read go read trading in the zone. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Unsuccessful traders think you have to know what's going to happen next. And you know, and, and and guess what? And trading is not about getting one situation right. No, trading is all about having a high probability trading system, taking that trading system every single time, and you never you don't know. Remember, it's called a win loss ratio. You may have seventy percent seventy percent of your trades win and thirty percent of your trades lose. Which which trade is going to be the thirty percent? No one knows, right? That's what that's what's that's why we call trading. You don't have to know what's going to happen next in order to make money. You're just going to have a, a trading system that you're going to take every single time, and then the and then the odds are going to work out in your favor. At that time, someone advised you in the comments to look at K Kim's YouTube video channel. He nailed it. Since then, I uh, note that you still believe in in the direction you are trading. Of course, I believe. I'm doing well. My account's growing <laughs> every week. Why wouldn't I? <laughs> Check out Market um, Sniper Friends Hunt. He advised that you should work on the balance of probability. Ah, uh, yes. I know that's exactly right, right? And balance of probability is what? It's taking a trade and not knowing what's going to happen with that trade. It's a balance of probability. Not being married to your belief. I, <laughs> I am definitely not married to my belief. My belief is I read the chart and the chart tells me what's going on and that's my belief. And if, and if anyone tells you different, they are lying to you because the truth, the only truth in this market right now is the chart itself. Not some newsletter or fundamental or just because someone got something right one time doesn't mean they're a good trader, right? Because remember, you don't have to, you don't have to get something right to, to, you know, to do that. And, and again, balance of probability, exactly right. What is probability? Probability is this, I know. Probability is having one trading system and taking that trading system, the exact same trade and be disciplined every single time, no matter what. That's, that's where probability comes out, right? The balance of probability. The balance of probability is not like, oh, well, I got into this trade and I had a losing trade here and I had a losing trade there. Oh, therefore my system doesn't work, it sucks. No, what, it's, what is it? It's a balance of probability. Right. So remember, when you're when you're trading the market, it's not about getting the market right. It's not about picking the market right. It's about having a trading system, taking that trading system every every single time because you know the probability is on your side. So yeah, we go for that. Uh, I had already uh, I already had my silver silver stocks boom. They boom down. I already had my silver stocks boom. They boomed down about 40% in two weeks. Um, boom down, boom down about four. <laughs> boom down about 40%. Um, uh, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, so the thing is, is, is this, I show you, you know, like what, uh, like, so I guy, guy, what, what you, what you want to do there, guy, is, when you're trading, once again, have a plan when you're getting it. Even if you're investing into a stock, don't just buy and say, you know, I'm just gonna let I'm gonna let this thing go for long term because I think this is a good stock and then and not have any exit point. No. If you get into a chart and it and it's clearly showing you that, that, that everything's changing, you gotta get out of there. You still have to have an exit point here, even if you're investing in the markets. Investing for long term. The most successful investors I know that they have they'll they'll have an error, whether they're trading or investing in the markets. 
They have an arrow to say, okay, if the market, if the market does this, then I'm getting out. Right, so you don't just you don't just buy something because you think it's a good idea. That is the wrong, wrong, wrong way to go. And you say, you know what? Oh well, I'm just going to hold on because it'll come back. You know what? It may come back nine times out of ten, but that tenth time, it completely wipes all your profit out and everything else. Uh, I agree. This March, something could happen. Continuing SLV, Brexit negotiation, dude. You know what? I should focus on the charts, my man. Focus on the charts. If some if something's gonna take place, guess what? We will, you know, if, if if gold is gonna explode, what's gonna happen? It's gonna get a nice break above that resistance level, isn't it? You know, if silver's gonna, if silver, you know, we got, you know, it's all in the charts, isn't it? It's all in the charts. Ching a ching a ching ching chong chong chong. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, um, so I hope that makes sense. I just I I get so frustrated, guys, sometimes because um. It's so important to understand that when you're trading the markets, it's not about it's not about being right, you know. And yes, guess what? Sometimes when you're trading, you're going to have three or four losses in a row. That's that, that's 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 called trading. So let's go and have a look here. Ah, uh, four million dollars in losses. So this one here was four million dollars in losses here. We also can see that. Let's have a look here. Um, trading is not the hardest thing you'll ever do. That's not a professional statement. Um, let's see here. Trading is easy. Trading and being consistent winner, protecting your asset is more challenging part. Hang on a minute. You just, oh, trading is easy. Trading and being consistent, a consistent winner, protecting your asset is the more challenging part. Hang on a minute. If trading is easy, then consistent winners should be easy. And now, by the way, Joe Bollock, I hope you can see, if you're watching this video right now, I hope you can see what I said a minute ago about trading, right? Consistent winning is not about having a winning trade every single time. Consistent winning is about taking the trade. And it's like, okay, I know if I took this exact same trade 20 times, then I'm going to have a win-loss ratio, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? That's how trade, that's how professional trading is done. Protecting your assets and more challenging part? No, that's, that, that is the easiest part. Just have a really good risk management. For me, Jay Bollock, I trade no more than 5% of my account on my options. If the whole world goes belly up, I've only had 5% risk in the market. If that trade works out for me, then I, then then my account can grow 5, 10, 15%. If I get a couple hundred percent return on that option, my account can go up, my account can go up by 10% in my one trade. You know what I mean? So the protecting part is actually quite easy, what I just said there. Being a consistent winner. Being a consistent winner is about having, once again, it's about having your one system there, um, that one system there, and then you taking that trade every single time, but you don't, you, you, consistent winning is not about knowing what's gonna happen next. Consistent, consistent profitable traders just have their system and they take their, they take their, they take their trade every single time, every single time. And you, you, you don't know what you don't know what's going to happen the next. You know you don't know what's going to happen on the trades around. It may may be a winner, maybe a loser, but you know that over twenty trades you're likely to have a seventy or eighty percent win loss ratio. But you never know what that twenty or thirty percent loss is. You never know. You know you may have a loss here and a loss here, and then suddenly you have a win, a win, a win, a win, a win. Oh look, we have a loss, a loss, and then we have a win, and then we have another loss. You know what I mean like. You, you you don't know you, you you don't know which one are going to be the losers which are these losers through here you, you don't know which you just you can never ever ever predict which one is going to be the losers so how you be consistently profitable is having the same setup and you take it every single time regardless of what you think hope or or whatever you think hope or fear you know you just stick to that and make sure you make sure but make sure you trade in the same system every single time you don't you you, you cannot you, you cannot be consistently profitable if you're trading something every single time you're trading something that you base you think on. You think, you think, you think, oh, I think this is a good idea. I'm going to take that. Oh, look, damn it. I lost that again. I, yeah, I think this is a good idea. Oh, look, I made money. Oh, I was right. That right, wrong attitude is just completely wrong in the market. So I hope that makes sense there. Um, trade is not the hardest thing you ever do. Trade, that's not a professional statement. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, that's not a professional statement, Jake. Jake's G2? Really? Okay. So the largest hedge fund uh, manager on the planet, Ray Dalio, and the most successful hedge fund manager on the planet, Ray Dalio, if he says that trading is the most difficult thing that, that you'll ever do, if he says that, 
then I think that has a lot more credibility than than than, than what it is. I think due I think due to the fact that you say that you have no idea what it really takes to get ahead in the markets. Stops. I don't need no fracking stops. <laughs> um, this has happened to traders, speculation, and gamblers over and over again for a long period. They keep making money by sticking to their discipline, but then they hit a hard bait a streak and lose all their gains in just one month, one week, or one night. Moral is never to deviate from your tried and tested strategy, but it's easier said than done. Exactly right. Exactly right. Um, I've come pronounce your name there. Exactly right. So, um, yes, yeah, being disciplined. What ends up happening is that you you may you may you may be doing well and well, and you might have a win 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 win. You may be doing well, then suddenly you have a few losses, and guess what? Now you start like I need to double up. I need I need to get my account back to break even where it was before, and you double up and double up and double up. But yeah, it's easier said than done, and that's the reason why. A strategy, and talk about consistent winners here, a strategy is only around about 10% of your success. Strat there's a thousand strategies that work in the market. It's not like there's just one strategy, there's a secret strategy that works. No, there's a thousand strategies that work in the markets. The reason why most people don't make money in the markets, the reason why sometimes I've, in the past, have done really bad, is because the 90% rule, which is what? Just being disciplined and patient with that. And then my very last video that I did through here, um, this one he had, this, this one here was probably probably one of the best received videos I've had in a long time. Very valuable information analysis. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. That bing, bing, bong, bong. Yep, that's right. Ching, ching, chong, chong. Hey, John, thanks for sharing your knowledge with us. No problems. Um, any opinion on oil stocks? Uh, focus on the charts. If they make lower lows, lower highs, sellers in control. If they start to make high highs and high lows, buyers in control. Trade with the trend. Don't fight the trend. Um, that's that's all I can say. No matter no matter what stock it is, that's that's just follow follow that one there. How can anyone do trend analysis on markets that are all rigged to hell? It's a sincere question. Please tell me. Ah, uh, fan. If you go back and watch any of my videos, the markets are always making highs and lows on the weekly chart. At, on any chart, highs and lows, peaks and troughs. Those peaks and troughs are always telling your story. Forget what the oh, well, the markets are rigged so we can't trade it. Bullshit. Absolutely bullshit. The only people who say that are people who have no idea how what it takes to make money in the markets, have people, the people that just jump in because they think it's a good idea. It's like, oh, well, the market went against me. The damn markets are rigged. Blah, 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 blah. It's like, no. Follow what the markets are telling you. The markets are always telling you, and I hope you can see, fan, if you've been watching this video, fan, that throughout this entire video, I've really focused on that. And if you focus, if you watch some of my other videos, guess what? Focus on the charts. Focus on what the market is telling you because the market is always telling you who's in control of the markets. And if the sellers are clearly in control, like silver and gold, oh my goodness, the market was manipulated, silver and gold, silver and gold. Yeah, you know what? Maybe the market was manipulated, but I don't give a shit about that. What I would tell you is this is that if silver and gold were manipulated, I'm gonna bring up this one here, this one here is what? This is the silver chart, and, and we're gonna bring this up here. Even though the markets were manipulated, quote unquote manipulated, what was the market What was the market doing through here? It was so obvious. Lower high, 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 higher high. Ding, 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 right? The market is always telling us. So if you tried to buy it through here somewhere, oh, the market, the damn rig, the market should go up. No. Read the charts. If the markets continue to make in lower highs and lower highs on the weekly charts, that's the footprint of the buyers. Do not be fighting that buying activity or do not be fighting the sellers. And if we have a low through here and now we have a high low, we start to break up. Guess what? Who's in control? We start to break above these highs through here. Who's in control? Buyers. Simple analysis like that, guys. It really does come down to that simple analysis. It's not about knowing the insiders. You know, you've got to have the, ins the insider information and all that sort of crap. No, it's not. Just focus on the charts. It seriously is that there. I hope that makes sense there. Try talking normal. One minute in and switched off. I just hated fake, fake excitement. Fake, fake excitement. Um, guys, if you guys are watching this video, can you guys go comment on that? Go comment on that video and tell me about fake excitement. This is who I am, All right? This is Andre. Andre, this is who I am. You say you say it's fake excitement. No, my friend. No, my friend. No, my friend. So, um, yeah. 
um, try to try, try to try to be a bit more positive in um, in this in this positive world. All right. So if someone is excited, if someone is excited about something, support them. Don't drag them down just because you may not be excited about what you're doing right now because you fucking hate the markets because you think the markets took your money and the markets did you wrong. No. Um, <laughs> let's go through here. Gold will never go higher than fifteen hundred and silver twenty dollars. Really? That's what you think. That's what you think. Do, do, don't have any... Do, see, when you're trading, don't say this will never happen or this is going to happen. Or this is going to happen. No one knows what's going to happen. Just trade what you see. GDX has been bloody frustrating this year. Really? Oh, Mini. I, oh, Mini. I, I think, I think, I think you, you were the person I answered on a few videos or on, on this video about a few videos ago about... Focus on the charts, Mini. I hope you can see. No, they're not being frustrating. Just focus on the markets. And if the markets are going sideways, guess what? No one's in control. So don't get involved with that. And this is something just as simple as this. If the market makes high highs and high lows and it's trending, guess what? Who's in control? Buyers. If the market starts to do this and it's not really trending, who's in control? No one. That means don't get involved with it. And if the market starts to break up and start to make higher highs and higher lows, guess what? We're now breaking out of this little resting phase and now we're starting the roof here. It's not frustrating. You are just bad. You're, you're just trading this market all the wrong way and you're trying to pick the bottom there. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's what I say about about, about the GDX there. Again, you pick, you're trying to pick the bottom and uh, and it's just not just not the right thing to do. I'm worried that you're reading too much Martin Armstrong and what used to be two different opinions for me and now one opinion. And yeah, Joe, what a... Joe, you always have a positive thing to say. You really do. I said, newsflash, I don't subscribe to him. I don't even follow him. I really don't. I have no idea what, what, no, what, Martin, uh, what Martin Armstrong is doing. I tell you what I, I tell you what I see as you see it on the charts and I'll tell you what the charts are saying. And Joe, that's as you can see from the video, that's all I do because that's all that matters. Nothing else. Not even Martin Armstrong matters. It's like just what the charts are, what, what the charts are saying. Uh, let's go through here. Let's see if we can. Um, metals are a waste of money. They are short and not going for long investing. Also, metals have 20% markups. The commodities are spikes. Stay long in the markets since 1990. The S&P has had 1,800 compounded returns. CPI, gold, the, the new. Um, Eagle. Yeah, that's overall. You can be a lot smarter than just buying the S&P right now and hoping you're going to get another 1,000% return over the next 10 years. That may not happen this time. Apple price is going down. It may be, Richard. Um, uh, I actually think by looking at Apple right now, by looking at Apple, and I, did, I talked about Apple yesterday, um, I think Apple has, uh, Apple is actually having, uh, I think Apple has a bit, a bit of retracement there. Went through your video on your site, but the button you speak didn't appear on the second video uh, to move forward. I got an error. Meet me so. Didn't it? Okay, I'm not sure about that, Lightwaters. Uh, wish I was that nimble. I'm just shorting the spike. Hold to rich. Um, you gotta, you, you're going to do that, right? Cool hand, Luke. Did you even watch my video titled... Um, Trader loses $4 million. That's exactly what he did. So anyway, guys, so <laughs> there's a bit of an update. It's a bit of a, a bit of an update for you guys, a bit of a Q&A video for you guys that have been watching my videos for quite some time and a few answers to your questions there. And uh, yeah, let's just see what happens, you know, what's what's coming up with the markets and, and, and what's going on with the markets. A bit of a Q&A for you guys.